I want to talk to my friends who uses this phrase. I'm too shy to introduce myself in English. I just don't have the confidence that I need to speak English. And I'm wondering for those of you who use the word shy, could it be that you just don't have the speaking skills that you want to have? And so you're using this word shy. But what you don't realize is that because you are lacking these skills to know how to link consonant to consonant sounds together, it makes you pull back and withdraw from the crowd. And it makes you, yes, it makes you feel shy. So if you have the skills that you need, do you think that you can actually be confident now? Let's test this theory out. I want to show you how to use consonant to consonant in English. Now, this is pretty cool. When you have a word that ends with the T and the following word starts with the T, this is one example of a double consonant. So for an example, I have complete task. Now, I guarantee you, if I look up these words individually on the dictionary website and I click the audio button, I'm going to hear the word complete. Do you hear that T at the end? Complete. Complete. Task. And of course, you're going to hear the T at the beginning of the word task because it is the initial sound. So what happens when we have these double consonants, one at the end and one at the beginning? Do you pronounce them both? Absolutely not. And I gave you a hint here because I'm making an X with my hands and telling you that we absolutely do not do that. Listen to this again. Complete task, which is the correct way, versus complete task. You see how if I'm speaking a full sentence and I'm trying to pronounce every sound there is in a word, I am going to add sounds. I am going to take more time than what I need and throw the listener off. So if you can figure out how to recognize this, pay attention to it, your speech will sound more smooth and natural. I guarantee it. The next one fried dumplings instead of fried dumplings. I don't want fried dumplings. I want fried dumplings, fried dumplings. Same with the next one, steamed dumplings, steamed dumplings. I would say this is, this is you on your path to becoming a new you and speaking English. That's what I would say. You're the best English speaker that I know. So I want you to feel that way. I want you to say that. In the last example that I have with double consonants, we have to understand that this is not a investigation or I'm sorry, not an investigation. This is not a search for the letters for the du double consonant. We are looking more for the sounds, okay, instead of the letters. So if I'm connecting these sounds right here, I, so if I say not letters and sounds, we have not, that ends with the T, and letters that starts with an L, that's another consonant, right? I don't say not letters, I say not letters. We're looking for sounds, not letters. You don't hear that T in the knots, right? That's because we have that double consonant there and you don't pronounce it. It drops off. Weird and cool at the same time, right? Stressful and helpful at the same time. Well, go ahead, read a book out loud, highlight these double consonant sounds in there and work your thing. <laughs> I say work your thing. I mean like do your thing with this new skill that you had just learned. My name is Ladoris and I help professionals 
speak English clearly so they won't be overlooked at work. Who wants to be ignored and overlooked in a meeting? Who wants to actually want to speak and not have the opportunity? It hurts. Nobody talks about that. All right, guys, I will see you in the next video. We are going to continue linking sounds together so that your speech can be smooth and natural, just like a native speaker. Sounds great, right? Choose e adios, zaijin.